I can't actually believe this works with video. A panoramic photo from a video. This is insane. In today's video, we're gonna show you how you can make incredible looking panoramic photos all from one piece of software. Now, a pano photo is basically a whole bunch of photos taken left to right or up to down, and then you use software to stitch the whole lot of them together. Now, lots of software does this, but the thing is it takes a lot of work to make these photos pop and explode and look incredibly good for the gram or wherever you're putting it. That's where Luminar Neo comes in because it's got a whole bunch of different types of presets to make amazing looking photographs and it also uses artificial intelligence to make these things explode. So let's dive into Luminar Neo. Let's go add photos. I'm going to add a folder. So I've got a folder here with just all of my pano photos that I have taken. I'm going to select folder. Now it's bumping all of these in and what we want to do is select all of these and then just drag it down to panorama stitching. Like, um, how easy is that? So it's gonna do all of these once it gets them in there. We're gonna select start. It's gonna do its thing. Its thing. And then once it's kind of got all of these together, we have a few options here so we can zoom in. Yeah, that, so all stitched those bunch of photographs together really, really well. I'm gonna select continue. And then we can see we can crop it manually, but if we want to get the software to do it, we can go maximize crop area. And then that gives us the maximum crop for this panoramic image. I'm going to select crop and boom. It's, it, how long did that take? Seriously, that like took seconds. So I'm going to select save. Now the thing is, these panel photos work with any type of camera. It doesn't have to be a DSLR or a monitor's camera. You can just take a bunch of photos if you don't have a panel mode in your phone, drop them in here, it's the same thing. So once we get these in here, uh, all we gotta do then is jump into our presets. So we have a whole different bunch of options here. So we have scenery, we have close-ups. Let's take a look at easy landscapes. So I'm gonna take a look at easy landscapes here. We could do a clean light, which has already made a huge difference to this photo. So we can go before and after. Mmm. Black and white, a little bit of mood. Forest stream. So there is loads of these, including if we scroll down here, cinematic stuff. Cinematic, as we know, is a look that everybody wants to go for. So we have Blockbuster. So we have the uh, Beyond the Wall. Teal and orange, I mean, look at that, just, just like that. Teal and orange is kind of a hard look to achieve if you don't know what you're doing. So something like this makes it really easy. Shanghai, cyberpunk. So I kind of like the teal and orange, but if you want to start digging into this a little bit more and really level up, Forget about the presets. Anywhere where you see this little orange AI means artificial intelligence is going to be involved in the process. So if we take a look at enhance, we can bring up our accent. So again, we're making this photo pop just by dragging this. And we can do a sky enhancer if we want. Now, speaking of the sky, this sky is, it's okay. It's not the best sky, but like, you know, dims the brakes when it comes to shooting any type of photo. You are kind of reluctant and reliant on a good sky and good light. So let's say you've been out all day and you don't get that. We can bounce into sky here and then we can go to sky selection and we can change our skies to whatever we want. Simple. And it all matches in the color changes as well here. So maybe that one, maybe that one. That one is a little bit more dramatic. That one I don't like. So there's a whole bunch of skies here. We could even get like some dramatic sunset kind of stuff. Some work better than others. I mean, that's quite moody. That's quite dramatic. But whatever you do you, and if we want to make it completely unrealistic, we can. But as you can see, even putting in like a starscape here, it is darkening everything and surrounded. So it doesn't look like the perfect nighttime shot, but it's not bad. So you can kind of really start delving into these a little bit more. So you can get a sky that suits. And once you kind of uh, get a sky that you like, and I'm kind of going to go with, hmm, so many choices. I'm going to go with this one, all right? We can actually change our sky so we can make it more we can make it less we can change the vertical position we can do whatever is that a plane 
Now that's a boat on the horizon. So there's a ton of stuff here. You can flip it, then you can mask refine it. You can do the scene relighting so you can refine the strength. So we can see here subtly on the bottom right here, this is absolutely changing the lighting so we can relight saturation. So that's the sky. We can add reflection, whatever, right? So once you get the sky done, you can go back into crop. We have a whole lot of other stuff here, but if we look at the relight atmosphere, we can make the nearer side of the image a little bit brighter or we can make the brighter side of the image a little bit brighter so again you've got a lot of options here for depth you can it just makes your photos pop so much easier atmosphere sun rays if you want to put in some sun rays which you know you can place the sun center here let's maybe drop it over here and i mean like nobody's gonna know i mean that looks legit obviously the more of these things that you do, the worse it looks, right? So subtle and little. So we have a nice sky set up there. We can warm it up. We can warm the sun up just a little bit. We can warm up the sun rays. We can make things look dramatic if we want, which a little bit of drama is good. I only then, right? So there's a whole ton of other options inside here. One of my favorites actually is the super contrast. So you can give some more contrast to the highlights. Again, all of this is subtle. Midtones, the shadows contrast. As you can see in just literally seconds, you can go from something that looks like this to this. Now let's do one kind of slight little finishing touch. So let's go to vignette and then we can choose our subject if we want here. So let's say we want to choose the church cathedral and then we can start putting our vignette around that and the whole idea with a vignette essentially is to draw the eye so it's very very subtle we can turn it on and turn it off but it's just enough to start pulling you into the pictures before and after and if you want to go old school using the develop tab you can absolutely control your highlights and your shadows make the dark parts brighter the bright parts darker and we've got our exposure in there as well if needs be and there's a ton of other stuff there sharpness noise reduction the optics you can do auto defrange you can do lens distortion you can adjust for it in a lot of cases it does a really good job automatically so as you can see there's a ton of options here to make your photos pop maybe i've saved the best to last because this absolutely blows my mind with a video so you get your camera and you just like do a kind of a pan from left to right it makes a panoramic photo from a video and it looks like the process is the exact same as all of the stuff that you've seen but to know that you have that functionality is absolutely crazy big thanks to luminar neo for sponsoring this video i get a little bit of a kickback if you sign up in the link in the description and from july 20th this extension for luminar neo this panoramic stitching including the video one is going to be available